This is Utah Public Radio. I'm Shalane Smith Needham. Flix at 48 is up next with film critic Casey T. Allen. Good to have you with us, Casey. Thank you. And we look forward to hearing your weekly review in just a few minutes. First, the 2021 Sundance Film Festival is coming up January 28th through February 3rd, with some changes this year, including a new festival director, Tabitha Jackson. Also, a significant change, most of the festival is going digital due to COVID-19 with limited in-person events across the U.S. Tell us more. I'm looking forward to most of the festival being digitally based because I'm hoping that means they'll be able to sell more tickets and a larger audience will be able to watch a lot more movies from the comfort of their homes as opposed to the very rigid physical constraints of being inside an actual movie theater. But now that it's offered online this year, there might be an opportunity for a lot more people to gain access to these new films. And I understand there will be limited in-person events, something different this year. Those events will be taking place across the U.S. Correct, yeah, and that's something a little different, too. It's hard when you're on an online platform to have an open and thoughtful discussion about certain films or certain filmmakers. So I understand that the festival is still having a couple in-person events. Well, let's talk about some of the major feature films premiering at the festival. What can we look forward to this year? I'm really excited about a documentary about the modern dance pioneer Alvin Ailey, who really injected a lot of exciting freshness into the world of modern dance in the 20th century. There's also an, a documentary called Amy Tan, Unintended Memoir, that looks at the life and career of this famous Asian American writer. There's also some interesting comedies that look promising. First is How It Ends an end-of-the-world comedy, and Strawberry Mansion about the state of surveillance technology that will possibly develop further in the near future. I think the biggest film, though, that most attention is being given to is Judas and the Black Messiah, which is already getting a little bit of Oscar buzz for this year about uh, a leader of the Black Panther Party in the 1970s in Chicago who develops a connection with an FBI informant, which in turn contributes to his downfall. Casey, Sundance films generally represent well during award season. What is the buzz for Oscars in April? There's a moderate amount of buzz for Promising Young Woman, starring Carey Mulligan. There's hopefully still enough buzz for the 40-year-old version with its writer and star, Rada Blank. I really hope there's going to be at least a couple nominations for her, and that film was developed and premiered at Sundance last year. And for those interested in attending the festival this year, give us some details on how we can get tickets, how do we watch these films from home, how will participants navigate this digital festival? Since most of it's digitally based, then you'll be doing a lot of work on the Internet. So go to Sundance.org and uh, people can review different schedules and different genres of films that are playing and see what tickets are available for certain screenings. Thank you for that information, Casey, and we'll look forward to hearing more as a festival begins next week. Last but not least, I look forward to hearing your movie review for this week. What did you see? One Night in Miami, a powerful portrait of the anxieties and hopes of Black Americans in the 1960s, and it has strong connections to the culture of today. This film is adapted from a one-act play written by an African-American man, Kemp Powers, that was first produced in 2013 in Los Angeles. The story is a fictionalized gathering of four famous African-American men celebrating in a motel room together in 1964. Political revolutionary Malcolm X, boxing champion Muhammad Ali, football hero Jim Brown, and soul musician Sam Cooke are the real-life characters. Discussions range from popular music to the Nation of Islam, and verbal disputes reveal hidden truths about each man's future. Because this film is directed with such sensitivity, it doesn't feel overzealous or clumsy. 
some films adapted from stage productions can feel monotonous or claustrophobic, but One Night in Miami varies its setting well enough that it's visually entertaining, and the film highlights the numerous emotional nuances of the main characters, so each actor remains captivating. Its director, Regina King, is clearly not afraid of the emotional nuance, which helps the film avoid becoming a sausage fest of men declaring their masculinity and competitive strengths as the greatest gifts to humanity. Other directors could learn a lot from this film and hopefully will embrace the challenges of graceful storytelling through complex characters written with such care. A definite recommendation. Absolutely, and this has also been getting a lot of award season buzz and is currently available on Amazon Prime. All right, Casey, thank you so much for being here, and we'll talk to you next week.